the simply typed lambda calculus or even full recursion. In contrast, systems which introduce polymorphic types or dependent types are not considered simply typed. The former are still considered simple because the church encodings of such structures can be done using only unsuitable type variables, while polymorphism and dependency cannot. Syntax. In this article, we use int to range over types. Informally, the function type refers to the type of functions that, given an input of type, produce an output of type. By convention, associates to the right, we read as to define the types, we begin by fixing a set of base types. These are sometimes called atomic types or type constants. With this fixed, the syntax of types is, for example, generates an infinite set of types starting with we also fix a set of term constants for the base types. For example, we might assume a base type nat, and the term constants could be the natural numbers. In the original presentation, Church used only two base types, for the type of propositions and for the type of individuals. The type has no term constants, whereas has one term constant. Frequently the calculus with only one base type, usually, is considered. The syntax of the simply typed lambda calculus is essentially that of the lambda calculus itself. We write to denote that the variable is of type. The term syntax is then, where is a term constant, that is, variable reference, abstractions, application, and constant. A variable reference is bound if it is inside of an abstraction binding. A term is closed if there are no unbound variables. Compare this to the syntax of untyped lambda calculus. We see that in typed lambda calculus every function must specify the type of its argument. Typing rules. To define the set of well-typed lambda terms of a given type, we will define a typing relation between terms and types. First, we introduce typing contexts or typing environments, which are sets of typing assumptions. A typing assumption has the form, meaning has type. The typing relation indicates that is a term of typing context. In this case is said to be well typed. Instances of the typing relation are called typing judgments. The validity of a typing judgment is shown by providing a typing derivation, constructed using typing rules. Simply typed lambda calculus uses these rules. In other words, if has type in the context, we know that has type. Term constants have the appropriate base types. If, in a certain context with having type, has type, then, in the same context without, has type. If, in a certain context, has type, and has type, then has type. Examples of closed terms, i.e., terms typable in the empty context, are, for every type, a term, for types, a term, and, for types, a term. These are the types lambda calculus representations of the basic combinators of combinatory logic. Each type is assigned an order, a number, for base types, for function types. That is, the order of a type measures the depth of the most left nested arrow. Hence, semantics, intrinsic versus extrinsic interpretations broadly speaking. There are two different ways of assigning meaning to the simply typed lambda calculus. As to typed languages more generally, sometimes called intrinsic versus extrinsic or church style versus curry style. An intrinsic church style semantics only assigns meaning to well-typed terms, or more precisely, assigns meaning directly to typing derivations. This has the effect that terms differing only by type annotations can nonetheless be assigned different meanings. For example, the identity term on integers and the identity term on booleans may mean different things. In contrast, an extrinsic Curry-style semantics assigns meaning to terms regardless of typing, as they would be interpreted in an untyped language. In this view, and mean the same thing, the distinction between intrinsic and extrinsic semantics is sometimes associated with the presence or absence of annotations on lambda abstractions, but strictly speaking this usage is imprecise. 
It is possible to define a Curry-style semantics on annotated terms simply by ignoring the types, as it is possible to give a Church-style semantics on unannotated terms when the types can be deduced from context. The essential difference between intrinsic and extrinsic approaches is just whether the typing rules are viewed as defining the language, or as a formalism for verifying properties of a more primitive underlying language. Most of the different semantic interpretations discussed below can be seen through either of Church or Curry perspective. Equational theory The simply typed lambda calculus has the same equational theory of eta eta equivalence as in typed lambda calculus, but subject to type restrictions. The equation for beta reduction holds in context whenever and while the equation for eta reduction holds whenever and does not appear free in operational semantics likewise. The operational semantics of simply typed lambda calculus can be fixed as for the intyped lambda calculus using call by name, call by value, or other evaluation strategies. As for any typed language, type safety is a fundamental property of all of these evaluation strategies. Additionally, the strong normalization property described below implies that any evaluation strategy will terminate on all simply typed terms. Categorical semantics The simply typed lambda calculus is the internal language of Cartesian closed categories, as was first observed by Lambert. Given any specific CCC, the basic types of the corresponding lambda calculus are just the objects and the terms of the morphisms. Conversely, every simply typed lambda calculus gives a CCC whose objects are the types and morphisms are equivalence classes of terms. To make the correspondence clear, a type constructor for the Cartesian product is typically added to the above. To preserve the categoricity of the Cartesian product, one adds type rules for pairing, projection, and a unit term. Given two terms and the term has type, likewise, if one has a term, then there are terms and where they correspond to the projections of the Cartesian product. The unit term of type 1 is written as and vocalized as nil is the final object. The equational theory is extended likewise, so that one has this last is read as if t has type 1, then it reduces to nil. The above can then be turned into a category by taking the types as the objects. The morphisms are equivalence classes of pairs where x is a variable and t is a term, having no free variables in it, except for x. Closure is obtained from currying an application, as usual. More precisely, there exist functors between the category of Cartesian closed categories and the category of simply typed lambda theories. It is common to extend this case to closed symmetric monoidal categories by using a linear type system. This is fine for laying the foundations of set theory, but the more general topos seems to provide a superior foundation. Proof theoretic semantics The simply typed lambda calculus is closely related to the implicational fragment of propositional intuitionistic logic i.e., minimal logic, via the Curry-Howard isomorphism. Terms correspond precisely to proofs in natural deduction, and inhabited types are exactly the tautologies of minimal logic. Alternative syntaxes The presentation given above is not the only way of defining the syntax of the simply typed lambda calculus. One alternative is to remove type annotations entirely, while ensuring that terms are well typed via Hindley-Milner type inference. The inference algorithm is terminating, sound, and complete. Whenever a term is typable, the algorithm computes its type. More precisely, it computes the term's principal type, since often an unannotated term may have more than one type. Another alternative presentation of simply typed lambda calculus is based on bidirectional type checking, which requires more type annotations than Hindley-Milner inference but is easier to describe. The type system is divided into two judgments, representing both checking and synthesis, written and respectively. Operationally, the three components and are all inputs to the checking judgment, whereas the synthesis judgment only takes in as inputs, producing the type as output. These judgments are derived via the following rules. 
Observe that rules 1, 4 are nearly identical to rules above, except for the careful choice of checking or synthesis judgments. These choices can be explained like so. If is in the context, we can synthesize type 4. The types of term constants are fixed and can be synthesized. To check that has type in some context, we extend the context with and check that has type. If synthesize is type and checks against type, then synthesize is type. Observe that the rules for synthesis are read top to bottom, whereas the rules for checking are read bottom to top. Note in particular that we do not need any annotation on the lambda abstraction in rule 3, because the type of the bound variable can be deduced from the type at which we check the function. Finally, we explain rules 5 and 6 as follows. To check that has type, it suffices to synthesize type. If checks against type, then the explicitly annotated term synthesizes. Because of these last two rules coercing between synthesis and checking, and in fact, annotations are needed only at beta read X's. General observations. Given the standard semantics, the simply typed lambda calculus is strongly normalizing. That is, well-typed terms always reduce to a value, i.e., a abstraction. This is because recursion is not allowed by the typing rules. It is impossible to find types for fixed point combinators and the looping term. Recursion can be added to the language by either having a special operator of type or adding general recursive types, though both eliminate strong normalization. Since it is strongly normalizing, it is decidable whether or not a simply typed lambda calculus program halts. In fact, it always halts. We can therefore conclude that the language is not Turing complete. Important results. Tate showed in 1967 that reduction is strongly normalizing, as a corollary equivalence is decidable. Statman showed in 1977 that the normalization problem is not elementary recursive. A purely semantic normalization proof was given by Berger and Schwichtenberg in 1991. The unification problem for equivalence is undecidable. Uwe showed in 1973 that third-order unification is undecidable, and this was improved upon by Baxter in 1978, then by Goldfarb in 1981 by showing that second-order unification is already undecidable. Whether higher-order matching is decidable is still open. 2006 Colin Sterling, Edinburgh, has published a proof sketch in which he claims that the problem is decidable. However, the complete version of the proof is still unpublished. We can encode natural numbers by terms of the type. Schwichtenberg showed in 1976 that in exactly the extended polynomials are representable as functions over church numerals. These are roughly the polynomials closed up under a conditional operator. A full model of is given by interpreting base types is sets and function types by the set theoretic function space. Friedman showed in 1975 that this interpretation is complete for equivalence if the base types are interpreted by infinite sets. Statman showed in 1983 that equivalence is the maximal equivalence which is typically ambiguous, i.e., closed under type substitutions. A corollary of this is that the finite model property holds, i.e., finite sets are sufficient to distinguish terms which are not identified by equivalence. Plotkin introduced logical relations in 1973 to characterize the elements of a model which are definable by lambda terms. In 1993 Young and T. Orin showed that a general form of logical relation exactly characterizes lambda definability. Plotkin and Statman conjectured that it is decidable whether a given element of a model generated from finite sets is definable by a lambda term. The conjecture was shown to be false by Loder in 1993.